Welcome to part 13 of the live steam Charles Loco build, and welcome to Dave's workshop and garden railway. Here's how I tackle the crossheads. I'm going to be taking a break from this project to put some focus on the live diesel. I got the engine out following a failed attempt to start it, and some strange noises on cranking it over. Let's get into the crossheads. Here's the real thing, a lovely piece of steel. These are the crosshead drawings, including the machining method and sequence. Very useful. I follow the plan closely. Here's my metal delivery by Tauranga based Kiwi startup company, Metal by Mail. 25 mil square hot rolled steel for the crossheads. Two pieces sawn off, faced in the fore jaw to half inch thick and polished, just for the fun of it. There's not much left in the end. Crosshead blanks finished to size, 0.8 by 0.7 by 0.5 inch. They were turned in the fore jaw throughout, facing off with a round nose tool. The blank is in the fore jaw to turn the spigot that the piston rod screws into. The position has been marked out and dot punched. Then the job was clocked up using the wobbler bar and dial test indicator. I clocked the job up on the x-axis, as you see it is now, using the DTI, and only used the wobbler bar to clock the y-axis offset. It was shortly before all this that I realised that the blank should have been 0.75 inch tall and not 0.7. Oh well, it shouldn't matter too much. The slide bar is 25 thou thinner than scale, and we will just have to not worry about this other 25 thou. The spigot has been part turned 0.1 inch long by 5 sixteenths diameter. Half turned is going to be undercut another 0.1 inch into the face. That's the tricky part. The face has been recessed using a 1 eighth inch square piece of tool steel ground on the bench, bench grinder. The job was turned at 290 RPM, fed straight in with cutting oil. It only chattered when allowed to dwell. 0.1 inch deep recess. The spigot has been drilled and chamfered prior to tapping. Tapped 532nd inch by 40 TPI ME thread for the piston rod milling the one quarter inch slot for the slide bar with a one quarter inch slot drill. It's an eighth of an inch deep. The job is half an inch thick, so I set up the central positioning with a piece of half inch diameter bar in the three jaw chuck, touching on the lower jaw of the vise to set the center line at a quarter inch above the lower jaw, the middle of the job. Slide bar slot finished and cleaned up. I did a bit of judicious needle filing to get a nice sliding fit with the slide bar material. The cutter cut a little undersize. Milling the flank with the fly cutter, using various pieces as parallels to keep the job in the correct orientation and the cutter away from the jaw face. The unmilled portion is a quarter inch wide, 50 thou is removed from each side. The tops are 0.5 inch, the remainder 0.4 inch, and the spigot 0.3 inch diameter. The front face was squared and straightened up with a 2 mil carbide slot drill running at top speed. Fly cutting the rear step. It's 0.1 inch deep, maintaining the quarter inch step. Oiled up with Rocol RTD metal cutting liquid at the start of the next cut. I was taking 10 thou or quarter of a mil cuts. The basic external shape is complete. Here I am reaming the pivot hole 1 8 inch at 200 RPM with a hand reamer. It needs feeding in a long way to get to the parallel portion. I had previously drilled the hole 3.1 mil diameter to leave a minimal amount for reaming. It's still a long hole though at 0.4 inch. I wanted to finish the holes before milling the connecting rod clearance sockets. 
The excellent lighting is provided by the lovely late afternoon winter sunshine. The sockets were milled with a 3 16th inch slot drill. The rods are going to be 1 8 thick. I decided to line the crosshead caps with a brass liner, 1 8 inch steel strip used, and 1.2 mil thick brass sheet. The channels were milled out with a 1 quarter inch slot drill. The brass and steel parts were tinned with solder, then sweated together using the butane blowtorch. Brass strips cut off, ready for trimming to length. Skimming the slightly proud brass down to the level of the steel surface. I couldn't stop with the brassing and did the bottom surface too. They were put back up and milled again and again. Drilling four of the six 1.4 mil holes pre-drilled in the cap through into the body about 3 16th inch deep for quarter inch 10 VA screws. The toolmaker's clamp covers two holes. These will be drilled later. Four holes in the cap have been drilled out to 1.8 mil, 10 VA clearance, and the cap screwed down for the last two 1.4 mil holes to be drilled for 10 VA tapping. I shy away from 10 VA threads whenever I can, being an 8 VA man, but I had a nice supply of ideal 10BA with smaller heads, hex screws. These are used for attaining the chimney to the smoke box. I got into a good rhythm tapping the 12 holes. All three taps were used, taper, intermediate and plug taps. They were all hand tapped, two insertions of all the taps was made, cleaning off in between, making sure the taps went all the way into the bottom. They went well with no problems. Cutting oil is essential. Here are the two mostly complete crossheads on a piece of slide bar material. These are free sliding on the bar, a couple of thou clearance here and there. Part way into making a brass square headed filler screw for the oiler on top of the crosshead. Super glued into a square bar for indexing to mill the square head. Head milled with a 4 mil end mill. The thread is 8 BA. Oiler on top. The steel piece is 1 8 inch diameter, threaded in and hollow for oiling. Thanks for watching.